What's going on YouTube? It's Marvel DC Bros and we're coming at you with our Flash finale review. Our review today is going to be a little different since that finale was filled with so much good stuff we decided to do our top 10 moments this time. So it's not going to be just five, so it'll be twice as long. But our first moment from tonight, we're going to start out not light, but something that wasn't as, like, you know, it's amazing. Like, I agree it was amazing, but it wasn't like as some of our scenes further down will be. Our first scene is the Caitlyn and Ronnie wedding. I really liked it. It was really cute of them. I'm so glad they finally got to get married and tie the knot. <coughs> of course, it's sad for some Snowberry fans, but it was it was really cute. I enjoyed their wedding. I really liked this scene because all season long, we've kind of been, it's just kind of been Caitlyn promoting Ronnie and her, her relationship, and so it didn't really feel real to me, and so when they got married, it felt real, and the relationship was just kind of there. And I really liked how, I mean, it kind of felt like it was Caitlyn's dream to marry Ronnie. So I'm really happy that they were ended up getting married. Our second moment of the night is when Cisco and Aobard were talking. I really liked this scene. Like, any scene that Tom Cavanaugh is in this season, I've really liked. He's such an amazing actor, and he really made the season with how great of a villain he was. But I liked how him and Cisco were talking... And when Cisco was like, you killed me in another timeline. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Cisco. Well, not killing you, of course, because I'm sure I had a really great reason. But then he told him that he was affected by the particle accelerator and Cisco is a metahuman. That just blew my mind because I thought Cisco was just going to be tech-based vibe. But now he actually has powers. So that was just really cool. And I loved that scene because of that. Yeah, I really liked that scene, too, because I always knew, you know, he was going to be vibe. And when he said that he was a metahuman, I was like, what? I was completely mind blown. I did not see that coming at all. Our third big moment of the episode was Barry and Irish's moment. They had several of them throughout the episode, but... Got a thumbs up for me. This, Them two together were hands down, I think, some of my favorite scenes of the whole entire season. Like, the acting was just amazing. I mean... You could just see them with the tears, and like you could definitely see the chemistry up there. I really liked it. It was so <laughs> sad. I don't cry, but it was definitely a tearjerker of a scene. I liked it. Yeah, I really liked it too because it was when Barry was like, they all knew that like they weren't going to see him anymore because he was going to go back in time and save his mom, and everything would have been erased. So. It, they had to really put their emotion into it, and I really liked their emotion. I feel like Grant and Candace Patton's chemistry is just really well together, so I think that's why I like the scene a lot. Our fourth moment is Joe and Barry's goodbye, or their kind of relationship in this episode. I really like how when Barry was saying bye to Joe, he said bye, Dad, because he really has been his dad throughout this, you know, throughout his life ever since his mom died and his dad went to prison and just to hear Barry say that to him before he left that was really the icing on the cake and I was like I had goosebumps all over when he said that because that was just such like a feelsy scene and this episode was filled with him but I really liked that scene I also really liked it too as you they you know I of course before the show started he was like a dad figure but they both grew like when he, he became the flash I feel like they became so much closer, both saving the city, and it was just, you know, another tearjerker of a scene, him, you know, saying goodbye to him. Like, that's actually really sad to think that, like, if he went back in time and saved his mom, what would happen? Like, he wouldn't be as close to Irish or Joe, so it was really sad, and you could definitely feel the emotion, so I liked that scene a lot. Our fifth moment of the night is when Dr. Wells was talking to Barry when he was trapped in his cage. I really like the scene. I love any scene when they interact. They're just so, like, both of them are such great actors, and they play the part really well, and I love the reverse flash, and I love when he was talking to him about it. You could just, just like the whole episode, you could feel the emotion, and I also really liked the end when they were duking it out against each other. 
that was good. Even though it was short, it was still good. Barry, you could see how much he's grown. His uh, he was keeping up with him and pretty much beating him. So I I really enjoyed the scenes between the two. I really liked it too because they kind of, at the beginning of the episode they kind of switched roles. Like Aobard was like, I know how joe and your dad feel when they look upon you because i love you barry and you could just see that barry hated him so much and that's kind of how aobard was when he first started he hated barry and barry really looked up to dr wells and so i really liked how they switched roles and how barry said i want to kill you and he he really if he could have he would have killed him right then and there so it was a great scene our sixth moment of the night is jay garrick's hat I really liked everything that happened in that scene. Like, it just blasted through the wormhole, and Aobard was just like, well, that's my cue to leave. And it's kind of an Easter egg, because apparently, uh, I don't know if it was Greg Berlanti or Andrew Kreisberg, and Grant Gustin also, they said that they're going to have more speedsters in next season. So I think it's kind of an Easter egg saying that Jay Garrick is in this Flash universe, and that he's going to be coming into the show next season. And I hope that... Uh, John Le John Wesley Ship plays him because that would be super cool. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Just like our next couple of scenes are have to do with going through the little <clears throat> time hole or whatever. And I really like this. Like you said, it was an Easter egg. I really hope Barry's dad becomes it. That's a big theory that's out there right now. And I am on board. I hope it happens as well. Our seventh moment of the night is... The little quick preview of Killer Frost in the future. Bam, she, she looked B.A. It was amazing. I really like how they did that. Danielle Panabaker, she even confirmed that it's happening. I guess, is she a metahuman as well? They didn't say it, but it's kind of convinced to guess that she is one as well. And it's just cool that they showed that. It kind of like, it was an Easter egg. It dipped into the future. I really liked how they did that. I really liked it too, and I mean, he basically said everything that I wanted to say, but a rumor that I've been hearing from a lot of people is that she's going to be coming from a different timeline, because apparently a lot of the villains for next season are going to be leaking through the wormhole when Barry's trying to save it, so instead of the particle accelerator gen generating all these uh, metahumans for next season, it's going to be the wormhole. And so apparently there's either going to be two Caitlyns or if Barry time travels again, that's how we're going to see her. But it was still amazing. Our eighth moment of the night is when Barry was time traveling and he saw the clip from the Legends of Tomorrow. I really like that scene because I'm, I've heard around the internet and rumors and stuff that Barry's going to be a big part of Legends of Tomorrow. And him seeing it when he was time traveling and, you know, he saw images from the future that he saw it. And so apparently, I guess he will be a part of it. And that just gets me really excited because the cast for Legend of Tomorrow is already so huge and awesome that adding, you know, Grant Gustin and Barry to it is going to be just awesome. And so I'm just I was just really excited to see that. Yeah, I just thought that was cool. I mean, they kept leaving all these Easter eggs when he was going back in time and the Legends of Tomorrow I thought was cool just because it, like, when you know, just basically foreshadowed that they were coming. I know they already released a trailer, which it kind of would have been cool if they wouldn't have released the trailer until, like, today instead of before. Because then they would have been like, holy crap, the Legends. Like, it would have been even more mind-blowing. But I just really thought it was cool how they put that in there. And then also the little statue at the end, that was really cool. I hope they dig into more of that in season two. Our ninth moment from the episode was when Barry went and was talking to his mom. That was like one of actually like I loved that scene, but it was one of the the worst scenes emotionally. Like that was so sad. Like I could not just sit there and watch my mom die, and then like talking to her after ever not seeing her in like sixteen years. It was giving me the chills just thinking about it. It was so sad. And, I mean, I really liked how they did that, but it was such a tearjerker. It was like, oh, I, I could have cried. I really could have. It was so sad. Yeah, I was, when he went back in time, I was like, finally, he's going to save his mom. 
and just to see, you know, the smile he had on his face when he got there and he saw her. And then older Barry was like, no, don't do this. Like, he had actually, you know, saved her once and he knew all the ripple effects that it would cause. And then to just see him sit there and watch the reverse flash grab the knife. And I was like, oh, he, he's still going to save her. Like, he doesn't care and he's going to do it. And then when he went to talk to his mom... And, you know, they were both crying. I honestly, I almost just started bawling. It was such a feelsy scene, and I really liked it. Our last moment of the night is Eddie Thawne being the hero. I absolutely, like, I, I hate how Eddie had to die, but I really loved <clears throat> this scene because... You know, Eobard was like, you were worthless, like, you're the biggest disappointment in our entire family. And then Martin Stein was like, you couldn't be. I mean, you're the originator of this amazing, well, not an evil bloodline, but he said, you know, you're the originator of all of it, so you have to have some significance. And then I guess those words just kept playing over in Eddie's mind, and he just finally decided that he was going to be the hero, and he was never going to let Eobard, you know, become a thing. And so he just completely wiped himself out and the rest of his bloodline and that was just the biggest you know like WTF moment of any show that I've seen this year actually that I think I've ever seen ever and it was just so crazy to for Eddie to finally be the hero yeah an underlying theme of the whole season was Eddie wanting to become the hero and etc and they finally did it by you know him shooting himself to become the hero. I hated that scene because I love Eddie and I hate that he's not going to be on the show anymore. Hopefully they somehow bring him back. Like maybe they'll use the last Chris Pitt or something. I don't know. It just makes me sad that he's not going to be in anymore. But it was such a great scene. It was another one of those scenes that made me like want to cry. But it was, I really liked how they made him the hero finally. Finally, we're going to give our final grades and thoughts about the episode. I thought this was a... My favorite episode of The Flash gets a huge thumbs up, and I'm going to give it a grade of 99. It got minus one because they killed Eddie, and I did not like that. But I like why they did it to make him the hero, but I just don't like that he's not going to be on it. So they get minus one point. My favorite episode, Mark, you need to take pointers on how to actually make an Arrow finale. You all did it perfectly seasons one and season two. I don't know what the heck you know, we're thinking about the last episode, but that's not what this is about. Andrew and Greg made a great finale, and I just loved it. It was my favorite episode. The acting was just amazing and so emotional. It was such a good episode. This episode gets, like, infinity thumbs up again. That episode, it was just 150 because there was just... Everything that happened happened for a reason, and I, I don't like why Eddie died, but, you know, he had to so that Aobarthon could get eliminated and, you know, none of this bad stuff would keep on happening. But it happened for a reason, so I liked it. And this was this was the best finale that I've ever seen. I, I can't say that enough because it really was. It had everything. It had action. It had, you know, like sad moments, and it had happy moments. And so it was just an awesome finale, and that's why it gets 150 because... I absolutely loved the episode, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our Flash Season 1 finale <clears throat> review. Stay tuned for the summer. We're going to do some Season 2 thoughts and some other videos. Act sincerely to one another. And we'd like to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to comment down below, uh, subscribe, and hit the like button, and stay tuned for more videos. This has been Marvel DC Bros, signing out.